the street. It's up here. I see the kitchen. Yeah, it's against this concrete wall. Oop, says to knock. So here's the entrance. Let's go check it out. Hello, what's going on, Akia Hunters? So today, I am in Chinatown of Yokohama, the biggest Chinatown in Japan. And I am gonna take the train, the Minato Mirai Line, to Kohoku, which is the most populous ward in Yokohama, to see an Akia. I actually used to live there, so I'm excited to go back there to see what this Akia is all about. I'm here because this is the nearest train station for me. So let's take a look and how long it takes on the train to get there and uh, what the Akia looks like. Okay. Okay, so I just got to the station, Hiyoshi Station on Toyoko Line. It was about 20, 23 minutes on the train from Motomachi to Kagai. And this Akia is located, I think, about two kilometers from here. So if I walk, I don't know, maybe between 20 and 30 minutes, I think I can take another train to get there. But yeah, I used to live here, so I wanted to see what it's like. It's been like 10 years, I think, since the last time I was here. I used to live here in 20, 2009 to 2010, a long time ago. It's good to be back. This is where Keio University has a campus. So there's a lot of students, a lot's happening. It's pretty residential, lively. I think it's a good area in Kohoku as well. Okay, let's see how long it takes to walk to the Akia and I'll give you an update from there. Okay, so I've been walking for about 20, 23 minutes now and I think I found it. It's on this street. I think it's up here. This is the house. Akia in Kohoku. All right, so here's the entrance. Let's go check it out. Okay, so I come in, I see the kitchen here. Doesn't look too bad. And then over here, a bathroom, a small bathroom. It's got a window. And here, oop, it says to knock. Here's a toilet. Kind of old school Japanese squat, semi squatting toilet. Okay, so this looks like the living room. All right, so you won't get a good view because it's on up on the hill. Yeah, it's against uh, this concrete wall. A decent sized living room. And here is the upstairs. Okay, so to my left, here's the main bedroom. Actually pretty spacious. Here's storage. And I guess you can take a look at outside here. Okay, you get some light from this window. And there's another tatami room bedroom up here. Small tatami room and it's a little bit short entrance to the room. This is kind of a common theme, you know, for our older Japanese homes. I'm 186 centimeters. It's about 61. So yeah, if it's not very new, I tend to hit my head entering a room. Okay, so let's do a little recap of the walkthrough. So this building was built in 1973. So it's quite old. The area, the land is 60 square meters and the structure is 48 square meters. So it's, it's pretty small. It's two LDK, so there's living room downstairs, kitchen, two bedrooms. So this is the, the bigger master bedroom and there's another tatami room across. So it can probably have a family, like a small family here. And distance to the station. So I came from Hiyoshi Station on Toyoko Line. Uh, it took me about 23 minutes. I think the distance from what I could tell was two kilometers. So, you know, depending on how fast you walk, it might take you 20 minutes or it might take you 30 minutes. I think it's pretty doable. It was a nice flat walk through residential area. 
it was pretty peaceful. I didn't see that many cars passing by. And uh, if you bike, you know, 2K, that probably takes you less than 10 minutes, maybe eight minutes or something like that. And there's a bike park, you know, by the station. So I think a lot of people would do that. It's very doable. Okay, let's talk about the price. So the asking price of this Akia is 7.3 million yen. Again, closing costs, it's probably gonna cost about one to 1.2 million, maybe 1.5, including the brokerage fees, closing fees, the title transfer fees for Judicial Scribner and all that stuff. Renovation, I think it's gonna cost more than uh, what I'm used to. You know, the last property that I saw in Hodogaya, that was pretty clean. I don't think that property needed much work. This one, I think does. Uh, you definitely need to do redo the, the whole wallpapers. The flooring, it looks very outdated. This door right here, the bathroom, the toilet. So I think it's gonna cost probably about two plus mil million yen, maybe 2.5, I don't know. Definitely more than what I'm used to. But not a whole lot. I don't know if there's any signs of water leak or any other major things. You know, it's just, you know, from the aesthetics, what I can see, that would be my guess. And from my research, the uh, rent for this kind of property, it's gonna be about 100,000 yen per month, okay? So all in, maybe 10 million, 11 million-ish, and you, you can probably expect about 100,000 yen per month. I used to live on the other side of the station, you know, by where Keio University is, so I saw a lot of students, and I had a tiny studio apartment, uh, probably older than this, and I used to pay 70,000 yen per month. So it makes sense. Granted, that was many, many years ago. It was back in 2009, 2010, when I used to work in, uh, in the heart of Tokyo. So I would commute about 45 minutes, you know, door to door. But again, it was not bad. Toyoko line is a very popular line and the one that I know the best. And it's pretty packed. And there are so many, uh, so many trains pass by frequently. And what's great about Hiroshi is that uh, express trains stop here. So you can get to Nakameguro, you can get to Shibuya, you can get to Ikebukuro, you know, through Fukutoshin line pretty easily. And if you hop on the Hibiya line at Nakameguro, you can get to Ginza, you can get to even Osaksa, you know, all the way on the east side of Tokyo. So it's very, very accessible. On the other hand, if you want to go to the other way, you can get to Yokohama within probably 15 minutes. You can get to Minato Mirai and you can get to where I came from, Motomachi Chukagai within 20, 25 minutes on the train. So it's very accessible. I think it's centrally located. And Kohoku, this word, is actually the most populous word in Yokohama. Yokohama has probably like a dozen words within the city, and this is the most populous, the largest word. It's, uh, it's also really close to Tokyo, so a lot of people live here. This area, very residential. I see a lot of single-family homes. What's great about Hiroshi is that Keio University has a campus here. So there's a ton of students. It's very lively. I like the vibe. I remember really getting the good vibe every time I got off the train. You know, there are a ton of people out all the time, but not many cars around here. So you feel uh, safe and pretty quiet around here. Yeah, I don't think you're gonna have a tough time finding tenants here if you were to buy this as a rental property. As your vacation home, your base, I think it'll do the job. You know, if you want to be located near Tokyo or near Yokohama, I think it's a good base. The only thing is you won't get any sunlight. You know, this side, as you saw, is uh, it's got the concrete wall. It seems like it's the theme of the Akia that I've been seeing, but you know, that's one of the cons that I saw. So you won't get the sunlight or a nice view or in case of, you know, big earthquakes, who knows uh, what could happen, right? It is on the very steep hill, so that's, that's why. But, you know, looking out this way, you know, it's pretty open. You know, you get a view, and from the second floor, you get some sunlight coming in. So, you know, if you don't mind that fact that, you know, you, you're not getting all the sunlight from every direction, this could work. And another thing, you know, this could be a pro or con. Uh, this property is non-rebuildable, meaning you cannot demolish and rebuild unless you get permission from every party involved, neighbors, municipality, and whatnot. So that's another thing. You can only do the uh, interior renovation for that. So because of that, you know, you can probably negotiate a little bit more or 
it's already at a lower price. I was actually pretty surprised to find something at this price, in this condition, in Kohoku, because it's more century located than the properties that I've seen in the past. Yeah, I mean, if you don't mind those facts, I think this could be a good rental property or a good base for you when you're in Japan. What do you think? Would you buy an Akia like this? Leave a comment. Thanks for watching. And if you like this kind of content, be sure to hit the subscribe button so you won't miss the future episodes from me. And if you're serious and have the capital to buy one of these Akia, make sure to apply for one of our services to work with us. It's not an easy process to go through this, especially if you don't live here or speak the language, so we can help you. Links are below. Be sure to check this video next for more and see you in the next one.